Good day. In today's video, I want to talk to you about manual filing systems for small businesses. And I'm specifically going to be focusing on the five file filing system that you can use for your small business. Expenses for that specific file. So if such comes to you and they want to do an audit, then you just give the person one file and everything relating to that period is stored together in one file. So it's always a good thing because remember these things in this file, you have to keep it indefinitely together with the security questions that if you do need to reset the password, then at least you've got those um, security questions on hand. This is like the backbone of your business. So it's really, really important that you need to keep these records. We can um, be sure people do it the other way around, where they've got the older statement at the top and the newer statement at the bottom. So every month when they open up their file, they have to page through all these different pages to be able to get the newest bank statement right at the bottom. So rather do it the other way around. And if you're paying the people cash, then remember that they need to sign for the money that they've received. Otherwise, they might turn around to say that he short paid them or that he never paid that person. So it's really important that this file together with the master file has got to be locked away. My name is Heinrich Huvier and I'm the owner of SA Accounting Network. I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and I've helped many small businesses um, get all the basic stuff set up for their business. So um, remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel as well. And then um, let me get onto my computer, then I'll share what I've prepared for you guys in the video for today. So what I'm going to be talking about now is manual filing systems for small businesses. <clears throat> um, I think this concept about the file file system is something that when I was still doing my, 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 my training as an accountant, that it, it's probably uh, a very old system that they've been using but it's obviously because it's so old it's always very effective to use systems that that's been proven over time that really does work so um so the file file filing system how it basically work is that you need to keep records you have to have five files five different files so the first one will be your master file and i'm going to talk to you guys through this system and to explain to you exactly what needs to be in every in every file the second one is going to be your bank file the third one will be your employee file. The fourth one is going to be your income file. And the fifth one is going to be your expenses file. So this is now for a very, very small business. So if you're just starting off, this is the system that you have to implement just to get going as a basis um, that you can build on. Because obviously over time, you can expand this filing system. So that is going to be the file file. So let's a quick have a look and see what's going to happen or what needs to be inside, in, in, inside each one of those files. So in your master file, or we will also call that your compliance file. So that will be the main file that you're going to be storing most of your very important documents in. So the first thing that I said that's got to be inside that file is your registration documents. So you'll see once you register your company with SIPSI, um, in the old days you used to get a CK2 form that you can take as your, your proof of the registration. These days it's, um, it's, it's your, your documents that you receive from SIPSI. That, so that will probably be the very first thing that's going to go into the file is your, your most current registration documents. The next thing that's got to be inside that file over there is your shareholders agreements, minutes of meetings, your share register, and any share certificates as well. So all the compliance stuff, you know, all the stuff of the registration of the documents and so on that you have to have ready for the banks and stuff is what would go in there. And the next thing I said is a SIPSI annual return. So remember with SIPSI, there's a return that you need to file with them once per year. If you do not complete, uh, file that return on an annual basis, then after a few years, they can actually go as far as to deregister that company for you. So it's important that you need to file those annual returns and obviously keep a copy of those filed returns inside that SIPSI folder. And the next thing I said is your financial statements. So it's always a good thing because remember these things in this file, you have to keep it indefinitely. We're going to be talking about record keeping and the, the, retention, the re, re, retention periods a bit later on in the video. Um, but the financial statements, you need to keep them indefinitely. So you must keep a copy of your financial statements inside that file. So normally you would just sort them according to from old to new that you would put inside that file. Uh, company tax assessments and proof of payments. So again, that's again with the receiver of revenue. So once you submit your company tax return, the receiver of revenue gives you a tax assessment. So that copy of that assessment, you need to put that inside that file together with the proof of payment if you had to make in any payments on your tax returns. <clears throat> the next one I said is your VAT and pays you in returns and proof of payments for the same reasons. You need to keep copies of those. Although these days is not um, that relevant. If you've got access to e-filing, you would have the copies there. But just for the sake of completion, it is always nice to have a hard copy 
on, on file as well. And the next document that's got to go into the file is going to be your tax clearance certificate. So that's also really important or really nice to have on, 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 on hand. You know, if anybody asks for tax clearance, then you can supply them with a tax clearance. Your BE certificate would go into the file. Um, any registrations that are that you've got. So STL or ECTA registration documents as well. There's something that a lot of people forget about. Um, to put those registration documents in there, workman compensation registration certificate, and your letter of good standing, especially if you work on site. Um, and construction companies, they ask for that letter of good standing quite often, so it's important to keep a current copy of that on file as well. The proof of the UIF registration, so that's in case people from the Department of Labor comes knocking on your door, then at least you can give them the proof that you registered. The e-filing registration documents, and you'll see especially in the past, they changed the system a little bit, but there used to be a questionnaire that you filled in with all your security questions when you registered for e-filing for the first time. And a lot of people don't keep those records, so it's important that you keep your e-filing declaration, which you signed when you registered for e-filing initially, and then together with those security questions, that if you do need to reset the password, then at least you've got those um, security questions on hand and then credit application forms we're going to be talking about that a little bit further when we get to the income file so that would be the 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 the, the, the credit application form for your clients that you're giving out if you um, possibly going to be having clients clients that's going to be buying on account from you then it's always nice just to keep the template <coughs> inside this file over here and the other thing as well is your credit terms so the terms that you give to your clients so whether at seven day terms, 30 day terms, 60 day terms, and just all the different conditions that you attach to your, um, to supplying credit. So I think this is, like I said, it's a master file. So this is like the backbone of your business. So it's really, really important that you need to keep these records. We can um, be talking about the electronic filing systems in the next video. And then we're going to be talking about saving the same, exact same information, but just in the electronic format. So remember, this is, if you want to keep manual forms or manual records, then this is that would be your master file. And the second file is going to be your bank file. So inside that specific file itself, you're going to be saving all your bank statements that you can receive from the bank inside one file. It's always um, um, important to keep your bank statements separate. So even with that as well, you need to keep your bank statements as long as possible. A lot of people say five years and stuff like that but it's best to keep them as long as you can. So I said over there, file again from old to new, so the newer statement is at the top. Now I've seen in the past where people do it the other way around, where they've got the older statement at the top and the newer statement at the bottom, so every month when they open up their file, they have to page through all these different pages to be able to get the newest bank statement right at the bottom. So rather do it the other way around, put banks, but statement number one at the bottom, then number two, three, four. So every time when you open up the file, you've got your newest bank statement right at the top. I said over there, sticky notes for unresolved issues. So if you are working through your bank statements and you've got deposits that you're not sure about where it's coming from, just make a little sticky note with a little pointer to say that you must still resolve that issue. So that's just something that is nice to use. Um, if you are working in electronic bookkeeping systems, then it's always nice at the end of the month just to print that bank reconciliation report and just put it into the same file as well. Because then you've got proof that you've actually done the books for that specific month and that your bank account reconciles on the accounting package to what the actual bank statement is because a lot of people keep the bank statement but they never check to make sure that the bank actually balances on their bookkeeping system as well other thing over there your petty cash sheets so if you're working with cash and your cash up sheets it's also got to be added to the file so if we are in september now you can put in the september bank statement together with the bank statement for september you're going to be putting up your petty cash sheet as well so that you've got both of them together in the same month. You can maybe put a divider so that you've got bank statements one side and your petty cash sheets on the other side because that is one thing that you must be very, very careful for um, or very accurate with is when you are working with cash to make sure that what's happening with that cash because people sometimes forget about that. Uh, the third file, which is also really important, would be your employee file. So that is everything related to the people working for you. Um, a lot of people um, sometimes prefer to open up a separate file for every single employee. You can do that, but it becomes very bulk, um, very bulk unless if you've got people 
a lot of people that you want to deal with, but we normally prefer just to have one file as your employee file. So what would be inside that file? Would be employment contract template. Mm -hmm. So that would be just the, the, the contract that you would normally have drawn up like by a labor lawyer or labor specialist that they would give you. So it doesn't matter who you employ, you take out the same contract and you just put in the particulars of your company should probably be on the contract, but then just the person that, that you are employing as well, you'll put the details in there. And the second one is the timesheets as well. So it's always really important that you need to keep record of the hours that the people are working as well, because if something happens with the Department of Labor, you need to be able to give them proof of the hours that the people actually worked. <clears throat> the third document, uh, document over there is your company policies and procedures. So that is also something that normally a labor specialist would <coughs> assist you with, um, but it doesn't need to be a very complicated document. So basically it sets the basic rules of what is the working hours, um, do you pay overtime, what happens if you're sick, when must you bring sick notes, um, perhaps you can put stuff in there um, to say the, what's your policies regarding annual leave, um, when is your, your salary increase time? So all that type of information would normally go into that document, your company policies and procedures. And it's always important as well that your staff must always have a copy of that as well so that they are aware of when they are not complying with the company policies and procedures. <clears throat> then, So that will be in the front of the file or you can put it to the back of the file, it probably doesn't matter. And then for every single employee, you need to keep the following records for them as well. You must keep a copy of their ID as well because I've seen in the past people employ people but they haven't got a copy of the ID and together with the ID obviously from accounting purposes when we're doing their the, the, the IP5s we need to have a tax number for that person as well but that is where that second bullet point the master file comes in so it will be normally be a document or page where they have to put in fill in all the details so they would have to put in their full names, surnames, ID numbers, addresses, contact details, next of, next of kin and their bank details, but if you want to pay the guy, then at least you've got his bank details as well. And the next thing that will be inside is that in each employee's folder would be copies of his payslip, so you need to keep a copy of the payslip. And if you're paying the people cash, then remember that they need to sign for the money that they've received. Otherwise, they might turn around to say that he short paid them or that he never paid that person. So you need to keep proof that he actually did pay the person. Next thing has got to be inside that folder would be his leave forms. So if they have to apply for leave, then you would obviously give them a template which they can use to do the leave application. And then they, those leave forms also needs to go into that file. Next thing I said is written warnings and related documents. So that will be anything to do um, with written warnings, verbal warnings that you may be keeping record of. Um, if you're sitting with CCMA cases and stuff, so all that type of documents would go into that into that same folder for that specific employee. So the employee file is really important and it's really important that this file together with the master file has got to be locked away. Even the second file as well, the bank account, you don't want your bank statements lying around in your shop or anything like that. So these first three files has definitely got to be locked away. It's not public knowledge this. Um, the fourth one would be your income file. So inside that file you would have copies obviously of the invoices that you've made out any credit notes, statements, receipts, or any correspondence that you've had with your clients. Now, a lot of people in the old days used to say that for every specific client, you must open up a separate file. Unless you're working with a client where you've got loads of transactions just with one specific client, then we would normally not, not recommend that. Um, it would be best just to have one file with copies of all the invoices. Um, some people, when they have electronic copies, um, or electronic bookkeeping systems, then they still, it is a good idea to print out invoices and keep a, a, a hard copy of it as well, especially um, if you're working with people where they have to sign, like um, like purchase orders and stuff like that, you know, say delivery notes and stuff, then it's always a good thing to make sure that you do keep those documents as proof that they have received their, uh, their stock. Um, the fifth file would be your expenses file, so that's exactly the same thing again. So all the supply invoices would go into that specific file, then supply credit notes, supply statements and remittances, and then your receipts and toll slips. So that's also important. What some people do as well, as when, they, when it comes to slips, especially the small ones, they would take an A4 paper and then they would either staple or otherwise glue those slips onto that A4 piece of paper and then put it into that file. Obviously with all these files, it's always best to keep it according to date sequence, but we will talk about that now in the next slide. So that is in short the five file system. So the first one is going to be your compliance file, 
Second one is your banking farm. Third one is your employee farm. One for income, one for expenses. Then um, just other considerations. It's, um, it's always a good idea, especially your income and expenses, because those change from time to time. There's those two files to maybe color code them so that you've got different color files for every year. So let's say, for instance, you're busy with a 2020 financial year, then you would make those two files blue. And then your 2021 financial year, you'll maybe make those files red. And then the next one, you're going to make them green and so on, because then every time when you look at your filing cabinet and you want to look for files from a specific year, then it's easy. You know, the 2020 would be the blue one, so you just take out the blue files, and it's very easy to access that information. So that is something really nice. Um, I said over there, if you've got more bigger volume transactions, then it's always some um, nice to file them according to that period. <clears throat> so, and I said over there, such orders, old versus new. So I remember when I started with my practice, if we <clears throat> got a bad audit, <clears throat> what would happen is the, the auditors would contact us and say, listen, they want to do an audit on a certain period, and then they would make an appointment with us for a certain date and a time. So we obviously need to give them a schedule of all the output tax and input tax for that specific period, and then they <clears throat> would come to your office, they would go through that list, and then they would say, okay, give me this invoice and that one and that one. So they would go through the list and ask for specific invoices, and now, the problem is, is if your documents are all over the place, <clears throat> there's for instance in, in four different files, then you have to sit and dig through a lot of different files to be able to get the documents that they require. So we always used to say, if you've got bigger volumes, it's filed according to your VAT period. So you would have one VAT file, or one file that would cover a two-month period. So inside that file, you would put the income and the expenses for that specific file. So if such comes to you, and they want to do an audit, then you just give the person one file and everything relating to that period is stored together in one file. We'll talk about the electronic one um, a bit later. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about the electronic file system, so it changes a bit there. But if you're working with manual systems, that's a really nice thing to do. Um, electronic copies, we will talk about that in the next video over there. Um, storage, I think that's... Um, uh, important that you must make sure that your files, especially the first three files, that you mustn't let those things lie around in your shop or in your office or something like that because that's confidential information. So you must make sure that those files, especially your master file, needs to be locked away in a safe or in a safe place at least. So, that, so that if something does happen, then at least you do have copies of those things. Um, yeah. And I think generally there, there's been a lot of talk out there with the receiver of revenue. They say generally you need to keep records for five years, but a lot of people's got a misconception about that because they say that you need to keep five records of five years back from the date when you submitted their specific return. So let's say, for instance, I go today and I file my tax return for 20 to 2010. Now, in 2020, then it means from 2010 going far back five years, I need to keep those records as well now. So it's not just a matter of just keeping records from 2015 up until 2020. So if you're only doing your 2015 return now, five years back from there is what you need to keep it. So we've had cases recently where they even come back and offer documents from 10 years ago. So I would just recommend that do not get rid of any files. Make sure that you just put it into a shoebox or into a storage unit. And then just save it somewhere, put it in a garage or get a storage company to store those files here, but do not get rid of them because they, if they come back and ask for documents, then you can have problems. Um, periods of record keeping, I touched on that quickly. File boxes and filing cabinets is always a good idea. I see that you get these plastic boxes, they're probably about that size, where you can put in those hanging files, so which is really nice to use because then you've got one box that's got the whole year's documents inside one box, so that's really nice. Finding cabinets, um, there's something that's really useful as well. Um, but just make sure, once again, that it doesn't become a white elephant because you need to constantly work on those filing systems to make sure that they keep um, that, that, that they keep it up to date. And then obviously on your desk somewhere, you would have a little inbox folder as well. So it will just either be a tray or something like that where all you need documents, so you will put it inside there. And then maybe once a week or once a month, depending on the volume of transactions, you will just go through that filing system just to get those specific files into the um, separate files where you need to be. So I think that's in a nutshell how the file file 
funding system works for small businesses. Like I said, this is just a starting point. Obviously, as your business grows, your funding system will grow together with that as well. And the next video, I'm going to be talking about the electronic funding systems. And I think that is really, really exciting. And um, so that is, I think, the way that things are going to change going, going forward in the future. Um, thanks once again for watching. Um, remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And keep an eye out for the next video when I'm going to be talking about the electronic funding systems. Thanks for watching.